In this video, we're going to show you how you can use the Data Walk solution to investigate a person of interest in a string of retail thefts. Let's say I'm starting out my day as an investigator at a big box retail store. I just received this flyer about a person of interest who seems to be involved in retail theft at our stores. To bring this file into our Data Walk environment, we can simply open our folder, drag and drop it into a blank link chart. DataWalk has entity extraction capabilities, so it will recognize objects, people, or places and connect them with data that is already in your DataWalk environment. Here is recognize Jesse Barron as a person. Let's search for him. And now, here we found him in our persons. Let's bring him into a new link chart. Unlike traditional data analysis methods, DataWalk has multiple ways of showing you where to go in your investigation. So generally, analysts are running queries and looking for their connections, but DataWalk has a way of prompting you. Here, you can see all of the objects that Jesse Barron is connected to. You can also choose our objects and hit Show Objects Count, which will show how many items he's connected to before we even add it to the link chart. You can also see that Jesse Barron has a glyph on his icon. Glyphs are ways of flagging data to show you when there's something interesting. In other words, it's a visual way of letting the data prompt you. For example, in this chart here, we can see that this red glyph with an X on his account telling us that he has a history with loss prevention and has been contacted or arrested by them before. Based on this glyph and also on the show objects count, we know that Jesse has been arrested by loss prevention before. What cases is he connected to? Now, now we have the three cases that he is connected to. We can look and see what stores did these cases occur at. Now we wanna know, are there any other possible uh, cases, loss prevention cases that might have occurred at these other stores? We can also use filters in our link charts. Let's filter down to the time range of around when this flyer was sent out. And now, using that filter, we can add loss prevention cases from our date range. Now, let's take a look at the people working at the store. We can add shifts for cashiers working on these days that the thefts occurred. And we can also add in and see who these employees are. Now we can configure our time series tab at the bottom to compare when these cases occur versus when the employees are working. Now, if we run our time series, and we look at when our cases occur, you can also zoom in on specific instances by clicking on these points and seeing when the shifts match up with when the cases occur. Based on this, it looks like losses are mainly occurring when two employees are working at the stores, Chad and Dylan. Now we can see who is their supervisor? Who is the supervisor working these other shifts? Let's go back and turn off our cashier filter. And here is our supervisor, Betty, who is the same supervisor across both stores. 
Now let's focus in on the items that are being stolen during these cases. Where are they going? If you and your unit has a, access to a subscription like Leads Online, there are apps within DataWalk that can connect to it. We can see whether these items are showing up at any pawn shops in the area or on OfferUp, eBay, any other online, re uh, online reselling store. Now we can see, sure enough, it looks like they're all showing up at the same shop in Virginia. Now we can dynamically switch between mapping the data and the link chart. On here, we can now see where the stores are located, along with where employees live and where the pawn shop is. If we zoom in onto here, where Jesse Barron lives, we can actually see that Jesse, all Chad and Dylan, and the supervisor Betty all live on the same block. We can see that there's definitely something probably suspicious going on here with this group of people, where the stores are, where they live the midpoint between the two stores, and the distance between them and the pawn shop. To recap, we started with a wanted flyer with very little information, was able to build it in to include the person's whole history with our stores, along with other suspicious customers and employees who might also be participating in this theft scheme. At this point now, as the investigator, I can dig deeper into their history or at the person of interest file to pass to stores in the area to watch out for habitual offenders, these habitual offenders or people with similar MOs. There are a few ways that we can share this information. We can save this as a link chart in our easy buttons and share it with other users in our agency. We can also download this link chart as a simple image to share with other people outside our organization. If I want to print out a more detailed summary of Jesse Barron to add to a file or show someone, I can open up his folder, export a PDF that will include all of his links and all the objects that he's connected to. The PDF will be a succinct summary of all the information that you have on a person.